<laughs> on a beautiful motherfucking day. The chili out there, the one. I just wanted to stand in front of the sunlight to let them niggas see, nigga, I'm untouched, I'm unscathed, and I'm undefeated. We win again. <laughs> the internet mad at the motherfucker. The internet mad at the motherfucker, they can't beat me. See, boy, the internet mad at the motherfucker, they can't beat me. I'm talking about they are furious that they can't beat me. Cut the lights off. Charleston White was attacked and jumped on stage after performing at a Christian-themed event in Crockett, Texas. Let's talk about it. So, Charleston White made a joke about the Lakers' bubble ring in 2020 not really being a real ring, and some Laker fans that were in the crowd didn't take kindly to what he said. From there, he was booed and heckled. And as he was being heckled, he mentions how he don't care because he already got paid. He got the chili, he got the money, so he's good. And the man who's only known to defend himself with pepper spray got caught lacking. He didn't have it on him, and he only had a select few items in his weaponry that he was able to use. Let's see how this all unfolded. Let's go. So talk right. I already got the back here. Hey, talk right. Talk right. I already got the back here. I don't give a damn about getting booed, nigga. I don't know how I already got paid. You paid to see me, nigga. You paid to see me. Lakers, Chaz, and Warren ass, nigga. Pull out some money, though. Pull out some money, though. Pull out some money, though, nigga. Bitch ass, nigga. Pull out some money. Pull up. I hit you with no goddamn head, nigga. Pull out some money, nigga. I, I hit you with no goddamn head. Pussy ass, nigga. You show no goddamn head. So as you can see in the video, this shit damn near went from a Christian themed live performance into motherfucking WrestleMania up <laughs> real quick. Charleston White didn't have his pepper spray, so he had to utilize the weaponry that was available, which was a vase, a microphone, and a chair. And he made it work as best as he could. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Now, in natural Charleston White fashion, he would take to IG Live the following day. And essentially, he would troll the dudes that basically, uh, he would troll the dudes that jumped him and attacked him and show that he has no scars, he has no issues, and he's good. Everything is A1 with him, and uh, they didn't really inflict the damage that they thought they did. Let's look at it here. What a beautiful motherfucking day. The chili out there, the I just wanted to stand in front of the sunlight to let them niggas see, nigga, I'm untouched, I'm unscathed, and I'm undefeated. We win again. <laughs> the internet mad at the motherfucker. The internet mad at the motherfucker, they can't beat me. See, boy, the internet mad at the motherfucker, they can't beat me. I'm talking about they are furious that they can't beat me. Cut the lights off. The internet is mad at the motherfucker. <laughs> they say they wait till in the morning, y'all. They say they let his ass go to bed tonight. See, his leg gonna get wait till in the morning. He gonna have lumps and knots on his head. Y'all just wait. And I said, okay, okay, just wait. <laughs> See, I told him, nigga, just wait in the morning. Just wait. I'm telling nigga, I know how to weed punches. Put a nigga out move at all. And a nigga had a nigga come running out of nowhere, like Adam Sandler on Waterboy. And boom! Hey, nigga! <laughs> that nigga delivered a mean tackle. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting. They need to give that nigga credit for whatever last football he team he played for. That nigga need credit for that motherfucker sack. That nigga did a hell of a motherfucker sack. They just knew I would wake up this morning. They just knew I got tackled, and when I got on the ground, I went to getting done like niggas do when they get done on the ground. Kicked in the head. Kicked in the mouth. 
punched on some more. They just knew that it happened. They thought that nigga who ran over there to try to swing, they didn't know Dewberry knocked the balls. <laughs> say, and them nigga went to say, <laughs> Tim nigga went to try to wrestle the nigga. Nigga, I don't want to play football. Where my goddamn money go? I just dropped my back end money. And what nobody think about the back end but me. I'm the only nigga at the bottom of the pile thinking about recover the fumble. Get the fumble. Just fall on the ball. <laughs> they thought I got beat up. They thought I got beat up. They thought I got an ass kicking. Oh, they were jumping. They finally got him. They finally got him. Oh, when he wake up in the morning, he gonna look like Willie Lump Lump. He might, no, he gonna look like Finesse Two Time Brother. Boy, I would hate to be on this motherfucker looking like Finesse Two Time Brother explaining this situation. <laughs> Say, I'm not bullshit. <laughs> Say, boy, I would hate to be not don't go down overnight. I've been online since this motherfucking uh, attack happened. And boy, I ain't got a cut. I ain't got a brew. I ain't got a cut. I ain't got a brew. Charleston White wins again. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> Say, they want. So there, as you can see, uh. Sounds like he all good, you know what I mean? He's trolling, saying y'all can't catch him. He's saying this what everybody wanted to see, and they ain't gonna get, and they ain't gonna see what they wanted. Um, no cuts, no bruises, no lumps, no bumps. After this, he also goes on live with Aiden Ross, in which he claims that the guys who attacked him were uncle and nephew. Not only does he mention that they were uncle and nephew potentially, but that also, you know, he was questioning their sexuality as far as them being. In some sort of relationship. Let's see what he got to say. Doing shit, nothing. Uh, just yeah, yeah. Just got football tackled by a nigga on stage. <laughs> football tackled. How did that yeah, happen? He, he he used his shoulder. His uncle. Him and his uncle was sitting. Him and his uncle was sitting together. Uh, you know, in a, in a, in a compromised position. His uncle had his arm around him like he was his girl. And they were the only two people in the crowd with basketball jerseys on. Everybody else had on cowboy boots, cowboy hats, and them niggas had on basketball jerseys. And they were and, and, and they was heckling me. And so I accused them niggas of being a nephew and an uncle who fuck each other. And they got mad. <laughs> Yo, listen. I just showed your goddamn head pussy ass. Listen, them niggas got mad at him. Yeah, Bro. yeah, them niggas got mad at him. So one Listen. of so the uncle the uncle with the Kobe Bryant jersey stand up and got walked toward the stage oh, and, and said, uh, "Let me get on stage." And so I, I, I feared for my life and hit him with the flower vase. <laughs> I was all right to the nephew. Uh, went to reliving his high school days. He put a hell of a tackle on me. And whoever that nephew is, they need to give him credit for that sack. For his last football game. Um, yeah, nah, boy, but would you think they fucked each other? Well, just what they were just, he had his he had his arm around his his, his nephew. And, and I was just cracking the joke, but I, I don't think oh, that. But you, you know, a lot of a lot of uncles in the country man. fuck their nephews like that. I'm the man, Me and you would never do none of that. No, you? no, no, no. <laughs> See, I, I'm the uncle that, that thumped me on the head. I would never let I'm you sit in my, my lap. Yeah, facts. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. So as you can see right there, he explains a little bit more details on what we're knowing and maybe what led to the altercation. It might not have even been originally about the Lakers and the NBA bubble. The altercation probably could have came from that joke that he said about them having an incestual relationship. Now, in this final video... This is an old video, man. This is like an old, old, old live he did way back in the day when he was kind of first blowing up and his name was circulated, where he ends up stating what he would do if he was to ever get jumped by anybody. So let's check it out. Let's see if he stood on business based on what he said at this time. Boy, I'm pressing charges like a motherfucker. Man, I'm pressing charges. And then I'm taking my disability papers to the prosecutor's office so we can enhance the charges because you jumped on a disabled person, a legally blind man. 
Now, your attorney can go get the pictures all they want to in videos of me driving doing this here. Uh-uh. He legally blind. And you jumped on a disabled man. Boy, your motherfucking charges going to be enhanced like a motherfucker. And he a community activist. And he a youth advocate. Boy, your ass going to be in trouble like a motherfucker. And boy, forget what? I'm going to take this eye out. When it's time to come testify, I'm going to feel my way around the courtroom. Yeah, I'm going to feel my way around the courtroom when it's up to her. Say, yeah, say, they go hard, have the Bible out. Will you put your hand on the Bible? Yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, like I see this, yeah. I, I, sir, the Bible right here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. There's nothing but the chapter truth. So help you, God. Yeah, 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 I do. Uh, yeah, then when I get there, they go have the microphone right there to talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking like this, like I'm talking on the microphone. Sir, the microphone right here. Oh, okay. I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Can you can you point him out? <laughs> can you spot him out? <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be able to see it in with that. Can, can you see him? Yeah, that's him right there. <laughs> I thought you couldn't see. Uh, uh, he got that's the same silhouette. Yeah, yeah, that's the same silhouette. I, I I'll never forget that silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> You lose all the way around. You seen it right there. He said, you know, if he gets jumped, he's suing. You know, he taking, he taking that, he getting the disability. He going to snitch on you. He going to be in court. He going to point you out. He legally blind though. This is what he's going to do. But let's talk about everything now. <clears throat> now, personally, you know, Charleston White, he has, you know, a lot of people who love him, a lot of people who hate him. Do I think he's? A, do I think there's moments where he says some things I agree with for sure? Is there a lot of moments where I'm like, this dude is crazy and somebody need to put some hands on him? A million percent. I tend to aim on the side I don't really like dude like that. Does he say things that make sense and is and is smart and well thought out to an extent? Yes, but in most cases. I find a lot of disdain and dislike for the way he carries himself, the way he moves, and some of the things he has to say, especially about other people, people, rappers who are deceased, people who are dead, people who are not alive, who can't defend themselves, speak on themselves no more, family members who aren't even involved in whatever he got going on. He's just, he, he's very disrespectful to a lot of people, and I understand, I get it, you know, he tries to use that as a sense of a, well, if they're going to be disrespectful, how come I can't be? But that's very childish. Uh, that's very childish and childlike behavior. As a 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, however old this dude is, he should be mature enough not to say, well, because he's a rapper and he acts this way, I can act this way too. No. Grow up. Be a man. You know, defend yourself when you need to, whether physically or using your words. Um, be mindful of how you speak about people that got nothing to do with you. Um... And just grow up as a man. Stop trying to be a child. Stop dressing in clothes like you Pooh Shiesty or you Desi Banks, bro. You are 50, 60 years old. Stop calling out. Stop talking all this violent stuff and violence while you trying to create something for yourself, bro. You 50, 60 years old. There's some people that might really catch you and they might not be as nice. You know, you got to watch how you move. You, uh, what type of security you got around you. All these different things because the more you ask people to try you, guess what? The more people are going to try you. It might start slow, but it will increase at some point. So I know he gets a pass a lot of times because he's an old man and people might look at him as, you know, mentally not all the way there. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for your actions. And do I wish any violence or any injury or death upon him? Not at all. But I do wish that, you know, him being a role model and I don't consider him a role model but there's people that like him and listen to him and follow his word or whatever it may be and take things he says serious and not just as entertainment or a character so in that sense bro you need to be more mature yourself and lead him by example instead of trying to be this old dude who's trying to get in altercations and violence and back and forth with younger dudes so that's my thoughts on it should I, should they have attacked him on stage? No, right? But does Charleston White bring that energy into his presence and his life? 
Yes. So if that is what it is. It's a maturity thing that could be held both ways. But I can't be surprised if people want to try him in public with all the stuff that he says and talks about and the way he acts, you know. Um, so that's it. Y'all let me know what your thoughts and opinions are on everything. And uh, if you guys like these type of more informative, you know, type of videos, I usually do reactions. But if you guys want me to go with the more forward, you know, uh, uh, current event type of videos, hit that like button. Get at me in the comments. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all remember to keep it real. Real is rare. Real always reaches everyone. And I'm going to see y'all next time.